Today I'm going to speak to Alexandra Lawrence, who's originally from the States, but has been living in Florence for the last 13 years. She's a tour guide here, taking groups of tourists around the city. So why did you decide to become a tour guide? I actually decided to become a tour guide after living here for a number of years already. I had been taking people around, students um, and friends and, and family that would come and visit, um, but in Florence and in Tuscany you have to go through a pretty rigorous process, an 800 hour course that um, you know teaches you all of the history and art history. So in a way it was a gift to myself to be able to actually formally study uh, the history and the art history of Florence, um, but really it was, it was to be able to, in sort of an official capacity, be able to share um, this type of knowledge, this kind of historical and art historical knowledge with, with visitors, with people who come, who love the city and who want to learn more about it. My favorite thing is, is meeting the people, you know, talking with them, um, being able to show them a different side of Florence oftentimes, um, something that you're not going to find in the guidebook, something that you're not going to find online or that you won't find just in pictures. Um, so really I think sharing the, the little kind of hidden unknown things about Florence. The worst thing about being a tour guide, I think it can be trying sometimes in a city like Florence that really is inundated, um, you know, uh, for, for a large majority of the year. Just the, the kind of navigational aspects of actually leading uh, small groups around can be, can be trying sometimes. Most annoying person, let's see, maybe a, a um, an annoying personality trait sometimes um, is the person who you know sort of stands in front of you as you're speaking with their book or with their guidebook, um, kind of um, checking your facts, seeing if you're actually telling the things, or someone who's constantly anticipating whatever it is that you're about to say. But that's good; they're curious. <laughs> I, I have a few different places. One in the in the center of Florence, I have to say the um, the monastery of San Marco, the convent of San Marco. Uh, I think it really is one of the most unique experiences that allows you to really get such a great overview of the art of the history uh, in one place, and it costs four fifty. It's unbelievable. Yeah. An unusual place, um, two really great places that I love that are a little bit outside of the center are um, the Medici villas, which are free. Um, the Villa of Petrai and the Villa, Villa of Castello, both of them are incredible. Um, I've introduced it even to Florentines who have lived here, you know, and, and were born here and had no idea how wonderful these places are. Somewhere inside the city, um, I really like Palazzo d'Avanzasi. This is a great example of a, of a Renaissance, let's say, a 14th century, 15th century house. It's obviously been you know, sort of recreated, but it gives us a great idea of how they lived back then, which can be uh, a really nice illustration for people wanting to learn more about that historic period. One place, um, hmm, I think that um, it, it is worth it, even though uh, the lines can be quite long sometimes, to actually go into the academia and see the David. Uh, we've got, of course, the, the two copies that you can see outside, but for me, nothing really replaces that feeling of actually seeing the real one. So if you can manage it and you've got enough time, um, I say the David at the academia, absolutely.